Dear Father, in confidence and boldness, I bring my needs before you. Hear me for the sake of Jesus alone. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is found in our epistle lesson from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what's your favorite part about Christmas? What's your favorite part of your celebration? Some things that maybe you can't go without. There's food, I'm sure. Maybe there's different things of music. One of my favorite parts of Christmas, and it's a favorite part of mine because it hasn't been able to be a part of my Christmas for a long time, is watching the children open up their gifts. It's fun for me to watch the kids with awe and wonder open up their presents. And yeah, maybe they know what some of those gifts are because that gift... They, they have a long list of requested presents, but they don't quite know for sure what on that list that they're going to get. It's wonderful to see the surprise and the joy in their eyes. And when I think about that, it's no wonder that I hear many people say that Christmas is for children. But is Christmas really just for kids? Adults enjoy Christmas as well. There's no wonder that Christmas is probably the favorite holiday of most every Christian, even ranking above Easter. Maybe it's because of the music. Maybe it's because of the joy of the season, the food, whatever. Maybe it's because it seems like Christmas, the holiday, lasts the whole month of December. But Christmas really is for all people. And this morning we're going to see that Christmas is for children. And we'll see how that fits for every single one of us. <coughs> Christmas is for children. First of all, God's Son is born as a child. Listen again to the words of the Apostle Paul as he, in some of the words of our text. He says, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. When the time had fully come, at just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. When I hear these words, I can't help but think of the words of Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone to their own city. And Joseph also went up with Mary from the town of Nazareth into Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David. <coughs> you know those words by heart as well. <coughs> At just the right time, God sent his son. How was it just at the right time? It's a beautiful reminder to me that God is in control of everything, and he knows our needs and the needs of this world, the needs of everyone better than anybody else. God sent Jesus at just the right time. The Roman government had taken over the world, had taken over his people. The Roman government and the, and the Greek empire that came before them had spread God's people all over the world. So that there were people who knew God's word 